G'day, how you going? Uh, I just hear brewing today. I just mashed in pale ale. Um, and I just wanted to show you uh, when I was out at Kenkig the other week picking up my beer gun, uh, I spotted these. They're, they're a new kind of fermenter that they've got in. Uh, as you can see, they're a pale bucket style type fermenter, which I like because they're very easy to clean. Uh, it was only 30 bucks and it holds up to. What's it say? Uh, it's 30 litres up to about there. So you can do a fairly big uh, brew in it. You'd probably, I don't know, brew up to about 25, 26 litres in there without a problem. Uh, comes with a tap and an airlock, one of those style. Comes with your bung for the airlock. Now, they don't come drilled. They will drill them for you. you Keep king if you want them to. I got mine drilled because I like using a tap. But if you don't and you like siphoning, you don't need to have it drilled. As I said before, it's just a lid like that. Very easy to clean. I haven't used it before, so I'll quickly show you how I prepare it for the first time. So there you can see where the hole was drilled. And there's oh. a little bit burred up. That's in my box burred up. And there's a lot of burr on the inside too. Now I'm going to use this countersinker or, or deburrer. It's just a metalwork one or woodwork one. It'll work fine on the plastic. Now that got the majority off, the big bits. I'll just clean it up with a knife. Okay, you can see there it's a lot cleaner. There's still a little bit of junk there, but it just needs a good clean and a good sanitizer and you'll be fine. Now a lot of people will say, you know, you can't scratch your plastic fermenters. Yeah, you know, spots for infection and stuff. And look, that's highly possible, but I can show you fermenters here that I've used um, I think the date on it's 2004, so it's at least 10 years I've had it. And when you buy them, uh, especially up around the lip, um, where the thread and the top is, there's always burrs and always around where the tap goes in. Um, it's just inevitable that it's going to happen. So don't be too worried. Don't try and be, leave big gouges in it. Get it as smooth as you can. But as long as you give it a good clean and a good sanitise, you'll be perfectly fine. And after that, give it a good clean. Uh, even though it looks really clean on the inside of a new fermenter, there could be uh, release agents and stuff they use for the moulds, uh, a little bit of oil or whatever on it. So you just give it a good clean with your normal cleaners, OxyClean or uh, sodium carbonate or whatever you normally use to clean with. Give it a good wipe. That should do her. Daughter's helping. Thanks, Jenna. I get some more cold water. You get some more. Yeah, you're playing with cold water. Check it out. Let's get some more cold water. And then just a good rinse, of course. So of course, don't forget the lid, I even wash the airlock as well, the grommet can get a little bit of a wash, and of course the tap. This is a black one which uh, you don't see that often anymore, in the old days they were all black. And uh, the main problem was you couldn't see if they were clean, but just in case you don't know, the best way to clean them is to take them apart. So that's it in its off position. Course. 
So there it is there, and you can see that crease, the seam I should say, from the moulding. If you turn the tap, so the little tab that stops you turning the tap so far, is right in the middle, or that crease is right in the middle of it, that seam is right in the middle, like that. You can pop it out. I'll just show you how I do it. I just use a plastic spoon. It's got a nice round edge on the handle, so it's not going to ruin and scratch the inside of the tap. Once you make sure you've got that lined up in the middle, like I showed you, put the end of the spoon in. And just bash it on the floor a couple of times, or on the table. And just bash it on the floor like that. There you go. That pops out and you can give the tap a good clean and sanitise. I sanitise it like that too. I put it together, put in the sanitizer again and then put it in the fermenter. So now we've got it all together, full of sanitizer, big shake, cover all the insides. I actually leave the lid a bit loose so the sanitizer goes all out, leaks all over the seals. All good. Now to fill it. So chilling and just filling it now. Looking well. So there it is, bubbling away. Not a bad little fermenter. I hope it's not too dark in here now, but I've got to dry hop this. And uh, I don't know if you can hear it, but the wind outside is cyclonic, so I can't open the door for any more light. And just a thing for beginners, if you're going to have to move your fermenter, it doesn't really matter how far it is, you are better off taking out your airlock before you do it. Now, if you're really worried, you can cover the hole with some aluminium foil or a clean tea towel or something like that. Uh, but it's a good idea just to take out the airlock when you move it. If you're using certain airlocks, can suck the sanitize. The uh, I use um, sanitized fluid in there, star seam mixture or whatever you use, and it can suck it back into your fermenter when you lift it up, and you don't want that to happen. So I just take it out. Whack a piece of aluminium foil over it. And then you're fine to move it. I have to take this out to dry hop because this lid's quite hard to get on and I don't want to force down on my fridge shelf. It'll probably break it. And if you're worried about sanitation, just spray while you're doing it. Spray the bottom of your airlock. With a bit of star seam or whatever you use, and that can even just still sit there while we wait. Get my hops ready. Just lift up the lid, it's not going to hurt. It smells good. Already, and I'm just going to dry hop this. This is just some centennial into a pail. There's no need to mix it in, it'll be fine. That's it, and then you, of course, you want to shut it up as quick as you can. That smells good. That's done. There we go, it's back in the food. Give it a spray, give it a shake, stick it back in. There you go, if you want you can open it up and top up some more. That's alright, that's still in the liquid. Good to go. You sing on me, I'm beside you. Now I've had to come inside because it's far too chaotic outside with the wind. 
think there's a cyclone coming. Um, <laughs> it's a decent fermenter. I'm happy with it so far. 30 bucks. Can't go wrong. It does come with a temperature sticker. I forgot to uh, mention earlier. Now all those methods I use for cleaning. All those methods I use for cleaning can be done with all the other sorts of fermenters, even the old Cooper's ones. You do the same thing if they're brand new. Give them a clean and uh, it's not pop dirty. your uncle. It's not dirty. It's not dirty. You give them a clean. All right. It's <laughs> not as dirty. I can't really say much more because I'm getting interrupted. <laughs> <out of it. laughs> All right, cheers. Wow. That's so cheesy, isn't it? Yeah, can you say cheese? Cheese. <laughs>